Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Dustin Meyer and this is part two of our Portrait Pro retouching and Portrait Pro body tutorial. Uh, in the previous video, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, we started out by doing bulk retouching and I used a bridal portrait session and the cool thing is you can create a preset for that specific bride and then apply that retouching to each image in a folder. So uh, next we're gonna be working on Portrait Pro Body and it's the new software that just rolled out. Uh, they just sent me a copy a couple weeks ago and I've been meaning to put this uh, video up for a while but uh, it's also spring and as you guys all know, spring is really busy for portraits and weddings and all that stuff. So anyways, let's just jump right into it. So the first thing it's gonna do is, and I highly recommend that you do this, uh, it's gonna go through the instructions. And like I said, we're gonna kind of, um, let's see here, we're gonna kind of you know, walk through this together. So click on the nose, you know, female, and next it says right shoulder joint. So right there, and then click on right elbow, and then wrist joint, and then it's going to say left shoulder joint, left elbow joint, and left wrist joint. Place on the belly button, do your best to guess, you know, especially if they're wearing clothes. <laughs> All my photo subjects wear clothes. Um, anyway, so we're going to put it right about there. Usually it's about halfway between the, uh, the hips and the waist. So right about there. And then hip joints, boom. And then if you don't quite know, uh, you know, where the knee joint is gonna be, you just kind of guess. So we're gonna say there, and then we're gonna say ankle is probably right about there. And then we're gonna do other hip joint, and then knees and ankle. All right, so now this part is really cool. Uh, you just move this in and out to kind of fit around the curvature of your subject's uh, you know, outline. And this part, you might want to be a little bit pickier just to make sure that you know, all the adjustments are done right. Okay, so just line it up right with the uh, outlines. Now, some of you guys are probably thinking, okay, I could do most of this in you know, Photoshop or whatever, but trust me, I've done this in Photoshop before, and you know, a lot of times it's just you know, using Liquify or something like that, but the, um, the thing about Liquify is it's kind of a, kind of a guesswork type thing, um, you know, trial and error. Uh, I've had to go back and forth and do... Um, do quite a bit of, you know, starting over when it comes to using Liquify. Let's see. Do, do, do. We're going to guess. So now it says, okay, click on this image if left upper arm is in front of torso or if it's behind. And uh, we're gonna say, you know, it, the torso is in front of the upper arm. And then finish markup and edit body. Okay, so this is the fun stuff. And by fun, I mean, literally, it's, it's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's see. We're going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see the full effect. And so we're going to slim down a little. Do you see that? See how cool that is? And I'm kind of more of like the 1940s and 50s, you know, um, <clears throat> posing style, you know, just to kind of if a woman's got curves, then show them. Uh, we don't want to make it look like they're just kind of like a guy where it's like straight up and down. Uh, so we can give her a little bit of curve. Maybe bring this in just a little bit. Lift is just kind of like raising the whole torso. 
and then tall. Basically, we're just kind of stretching. And then we're going to go down to torso and just see pretty much. I like using the overall general slider because we don't have to go in and adjust all this stuff individually. And one thing that I'm really impressed with, uh, the biggest benefit I see when it comes to using this versus Liquify in Photoshop, notice the outside edges of the image. I mean, I picked this photo because there's like some definite lines and stuff in the background. And when you use Liquify in there, you've got to be so careful about making sure that the background doesn't turn all like wavy and curvy and stuff because you've been like adjusting the waist and the hips and all that stuff. So I'm really impressed. They did an amazing job when it comes to shaping the body without like messing up what's in the background. There we go. Now this is really good if you're, she doesn't really have this, but if your subject has kind of like a, a belly bulge, then you can just raise it up like this. Bottom height. Yeah, we'll leave that alone. Now we're just gonna jump into arms. And this will help kind of slim down, especially the upper arms, cause I don't know why, for some reason women don't like having big, you know, uh, deltoids? No, I'm kidding. I, I know why. All right, legs. This one we don't necessarily need it so much because it's uh, you know her legs are hidden below her dress. But let's just see how that looks. Definitely more of a mermaid cut that way. But you know what? We're just going to leave it alone. And then skeleton. I don't know if I've used this one. Oh, okay. So neck length. Dang, that's crazy. Face position. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, let's see, shoulder width. We're gonna bring out the shoulders a little bit and that way it kind of helps create the illusion that the waist is a little bit slimmer. Left elbow. So we can add some curve, but not too much. Hips angle, man, that's, that's nuts. Torso length, bring it in just a little bit. Hip height, no. Leg length, you can lengthen the legs. So here is where you can go in and actually go back and readjust uh, the outlines that you've done. Um, and then, I mean, you know, but for the most part, I think we did a fairly good job. Let's go into skin. Now, this is almost pretty much the same as the skin smoothing that we used in the previous episode of Portrait Pro, uh, but, you know, for demonstration purposes, we're just gonna, you know, use it in here too. So smooth skin. There we go. That way, sometimes if they have like a little bit of redness on the chest or the arms, it helps uh, minimize that. Uh, let's see. Add skin detector size. There we go. And this is to edit face. Use the face section which is the next section. So I've tried, last time when I was doing this on my own, I tried to fix it using this section and it doesn't work. So, okay, now we're gonna go into face. And for the most part, like if you're using an individual image and you plan on using Portrait Pro Body, you could almost pretty much do all of your skin smoothing in here. Um, now, you won't be able to do any like face sculpting as far as I know, uh, with, um, let's see here. Okay, it looks like everything's pretty much on point. Let's see. But remember when I had to do the eyes and stuff, it was, uh, I mean, look at that, that's, that's awesome. When I had to adjust the left eye, uh, you can't really do that in Portrait Pro Body. You do have to, all right, smooth skin. I mean, especially look under the eyes, that's insane. Add some lighting contrast. I try, you know, go real easy with this because this is where it can really make it look fake. And smoky eyes, and I don't really need it. Overall picture. These are all like the different types of like overall picture controls that you can do. But for the most part, I actually adjust all of that in Lightroom before I import it into Portrait Pro or Portrait Pro Body. 
And I think that's pretty much it. So um, I wonder if uh, we can go back. Oh yeah, side by side. Oh, they kind of hit it. So, okay, so there's before. There's after. Okay, before enhancement, after enhancement. I gotta say, you do spend a little bit of time in here uh, doing like the outlines and stuff like that, but I feel like, you know, compared to using Liquify in Photoshop, it just works so much better. Um, you know, especially for those of us that's been like, honestly, next time you try to use the Liquify tool in Photoshop, time yourself, like see how long it takes for you to try and get it to look right and then start over and then do it again and all this other stuff. And then, you know, do a trial run with this and see if, you know, it's about the same amount of time, possibly even less. Um, and then go back and compare them side by side and see which one looks more realistic. You know, which one has the background is not as jacked up as the other one, uh, which one looks, you know, more realistic, like I said. Um, and at the same time, I mean, this already has, you know, skin softening, uh, you know, built into it. Um, with the stray hairs and stuff, I still go into photo the Photoshop and, uh, and adjust those because, um, you know, I, 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 for me, it just, I feel like it looks a little bit, you know, more natural. Uh, but I mean, for the most part, I'm super impressed. Uh, I feel like this could actually be, um, my go-to when it comes to, um, you know, as long as I don't have a whole bunch of, uh, you know, spot kind of adjustments and stuff for the facial retouching. If I feel like the skin smoothing feature uh, in here would work just as fine, then there's, you know, a good chance that I would probably just import my image, uh, you know, after I've taken it out of Lightroom uh, straight into here without maybe even having to go into Portrait Pro. Uh, I do still recommend using Portrait Pro, especially if you're doing like seniors and stuff, if they've got, you know, uh, blemishes, because we all did at that age. Um, but, uh, and for those of you guys that don't do senior portraits, I'm not talking about uh, senior citizens, I'm talking about high school graduates. I know that uh, some places like, you know, all over the world, they don't do graduation portraits. So when I say senior pictures, they, they think senior citizens, but no, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, anyways, uh, thank you guys again for watching. Um, I really like what this can do. I feel like, um, you know, once I've done it a few times, it will, uh, especially going through the outlines and setting all that stuff, it'll go a lot quicker. Um, I do, I'm wondering if, uh, so there's save image, export final image, uh, save project. That's pretty awesome. So if you need to go back, uh, you can do that. Um, I don't know if there's a way to save these adjustments as a preset where you could just, you know, create a preset for all the sliders um, over here. So I don't know why I'm pointing. I'll just use the mouse instead. Um, but uh, I'm not quite sure if there's a way to do uh, save a preset for each individual, you know, for like a specific person. And then all you have to do is go in and adjust the outlines just like they do with Portrait Pro. Um, if some of you guys know if there's a way to do that, I, you know, would love to hear about it. Um, or, you know, I'll probably hear back from the guys over at uh, Portrait Pro Software and say, yeah, yeah, there's a way to do it. Either way, uh, and if it's not a feature, that would be really cool. So um, hopefully they can roll out something like that in the future. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Um, I'm going to put a link for Portrait Pro Body as well as for uh, Portrait Pro Studio um, down in the description. And also, if you've got questions, I highly encourage, you know, just put them down in the comments section below. And that way I can go back and answer them for you. And some of you guys may actually be able to answer questions for other people and stuff. Um, other than that, I do uh, tutorials on this channel. Um, so you can subscribe and see when the next ones are rolling out. And also, if you like the video, I would really appreciate a like. That definitely helps uh, grow the channel and get more people to see the video. But anyways, you guys know how it works. So again, my name is Dustin Meyer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.